Good afternoon. <laughs> and first of all, thank you very much for being here. And I'm really grateful for this opportunity to stand here, to be here, and to enjoy this perfect conference, which I find to be very much interesting and enriching. Because all these ideas, all these presentations are really high quality presentations. And for me, who is coming from different cultures, all of them are very much in inspiring. So thank you for this. And um, now let me introduce uh, some uh, of my findings of my studies. And uh, this presentation will be on character strengths and well-being in European students. So I think we have not been talking too much about uh, other than Indian cultures here. So let's talk about it now. So just first of all, please let me shortly introduce the place where I'm coming from. So I'm, I'm coming from Czech Republic, which is a small country in Central Europe. And um, yeah, this is one. And we call the country the heart of Europe, because really it's in the center of Europe. So you can see the globe, and if you fly to Europe, you can see in the middle. So this tiny pink spot, this is the Czech Republic. And um, it's quite a small country. We have about one crore of uh, inhabitants, so it's a uh, half population of Delhi, it's really not so much. But we have quite a long history and we are quite good in, in research also. So, and we speak Czech, Czech language, so that's why I apologize. My English is not, not perfect because we all, uh, all of us in Czech Republic speak our Czech language only and also we teach at a higher school and university in the Czech only, not, not in English. So, and here you can see our flag and our national symbol. So, here are some pictures. On the left side, you can see the castle, the presidency of the seat of Czech Republic. There are many historical monuments, like uh, a beautiful building, and we have also very nice landscape. And if you come, uh, of course, all of you are very much welcome to visit our country, but be careful if you come on December, so you will face a lot of snow and temperature goes up to minus 10 or minus 20, so please take proper dress with you. So I'm coming from Masaryk University in Brno, which was established in 1919, and we offer quite high quality education in 1,400 fields of study at nine faculties, and I'm coming from the Department of Psychology, which was established in 1926, and we have about 500 500 students in our master program and also PhD program in psychology and I myself teach positive psychology, health psychology and educational psychology there. So now about the study. I think we all agree that character strengths and virtues are really important for happy and successful and positive life. So my intention was to examine and to analyze the interrelations and correlations between hope and gratitude and meaningfulness of life, and also try to understand what determinates the well-being more, which of those three uh, character strengths. And I also try to compare the results of high school and university school students just to understand where, whether there is some difference between age groups, whether the importance of these character strengths is changing in during the development. So just uh, very shortly about the background, so hope, gratitude and meaningfulness uh, we can understand as components of the virtual transcendence according to via classification of virtues suggested by Peterson and Seligman. I'm pretty sure you know about this classification. So and I understand hope uh, as, um, or I follow the concept of hope, the cognitive approach to hope, uh, suggested by Snyder, and he he suggests that hope is cultivated when we have a goal in our mind, when we have a determination that the goal can be reached, and we have a plan how to reach our goals. And uh, about gratitude, there can be a lot of definitions of gratitude, but I think that one is quite nice, that gratitude is a feeling or emotion or attitude 
in, a, in acknowledgement of a benefit that one has received or will receive. Uh, about meaningfulness, we have heard a lot about meaning, very interesting presentation, and we can understand meaning as socially and individually constructed system, which endows by with some personal significance. And uh, then it, there can be more components on of meaning, like affective, motivational, cognitive, and, and others. And um, psychological well-being, uh, I follow the concept of Carol Reef, which understands psychological well-being in six dimensions, like autonomy, environmental mastery, and others, which you see just there. So about our research sample, we had uh, in total 350 students, and uh, half of them were high school students, 30% male and 70% females, and mean age was about 18 years, and we had also 175 university students, 47% of males and 53% females, and data collection took place last year in the Czech Republic. And we used these four questionnaires, the adult hope trait scale, gratitude questionnaire, purpose in life test, and psychological well-being scale. I think you know most of them. And we used these uh, formal uh, statistic uh, procedures. So just, uh, I'd like to just very briefly introduce you the results, and then we can comment a little bit. So we can see that in high school students, which are in the age about 18, so all of these uh, variables go together. All of them are, between them is uh, statistically significant positive relation. So hope and gratitude and meaningfulness, it, it really shows that they belong together. They together create the virtual transcendence. In university students, the, the results were a little bit different. We can see that here we, we can find them find the statistically significant relationships between hope and meaningfulness and hope and gratitude only. So we also try to try to understand what determines the well-being more. And in university students we can see that uh, the all of these variables are uh, are positively related to well-being and, and uh, the host is that one which most determines uh, our well-being or university students' well-being. That in high school students, the most important factor of well-being was about meaningfulness. So we also try to understand whether there is some difference between university and high school students, and we found significant differences in the rate of well-being and hope. So university students, the elder ones, are significantly, or they have significantly higher level of hope and well-being. So I think this could be uh, explained like this, that uh, they already somehow successfully overcame the turbulence of period of adolescence, where in, when we are 15 or 16 or 17, so we ask ourselves, so where am I, what shall I do, where is the meaning, what shall I study, what's it expecting from me, from me, and so on. So uni uh, university students, they, they uh, looks like they, they already solved some, some developmental task, and they show a higher level of hope and also well-being. So just to sum up, there is really statistically significant positive relation between hope and well-being, both in uh, high school students and university students. So this suggests that if we try to suggest some um, interventions, hope promoting interventions, strategies promoting hope for an optimistic, uh, optimistic thinking and attitude, so we could also promote well-being uh, with gratitude. You know, this, we found the statistically significant relation between gratitude and well-being only in university students, but not in high school students. And meaningfulness, again, we found a positive, a positive relationship between meaningfulness and well-being both in 
high, high school and university students. So when we compare these two groups, so we can see that hope and gratitude and meaning all together, they explain 56.5% of well-being in high school students and a little bit less rate, 51.9% percent of variance of well-being in university students <laughs> and the well-being in high school students is most determined by meaningfulness in the university students. It is most determined by, uh, by their whole. So uh, I think that it's quite interesting that in the high school students we did not find positive relationship between well-being and gratitude. <laughs> this is quite surprising because in all other studies we can see that gratitude is um, often related to well-being. So I have an idea to go deeper to this and, and ask students, so okay, so what are you grateful for? And uh, so this is the second part of the study, the qualitative one. We conducted a content analysis of respondents' answers. We had uh, about 407, not about exactly, 407 high school students. And we ask them the question, what are you grateful for? And we have got about 800 um, statements. So I think it would be quite interesting, interesting if you could ask the question and you could say, what are you grateful for? And now I, I can show you the result of the Czech students. So young Czech people by the age of 16 or 17, they most are grateful for social social relationships. Three hundred seventy nine quotations. So they mentioned they are grateful for family, for friends, for someone someone they love, or someone who loves them. They are also grateful for parents, for for social support, and also they are grateful for help that they receive from, from other people. Second position was environment. This is a large category, and uh, we can understand this way that students are grateful for home, for good good opportunities they perceive that they have in their life. Some of them are also grateful for money, life in freedom, homeland, like Czech Republic. That they are grateful that they for that they live in in comfort, that they have enough food, that they can entertain themselves and that they can have some hobbies. And um, quite a high number, let's say, is uh, also grateful for education, for, for experiences that they can gain, gain. And also they show gratitude for good up, upbringing, for intelligence, for happiness, confidence. And also, yeah, here it's quite interesting. Maybe it would not happen in, in your culture, just, just for four people from out of 400 mentions that they are grateful for young or someone, something they can believe. So, and uh, also the lowest number is uh, show social day gratefulness for health or something that helps them to, to function independently, life or good health. So just to conclude, I think that these results um, just support the finding that it's really important to think about the, the relationship between well-being and collective strength and that the, we should be encouraged to, to create and such as some positive psychology intervention that would be focused on better knowledge and use of character strength and virtue which are connected to well-being. And I think that one of the most important is gratitude. Because I don't know how, I'm not exactly sure how it is in your culture, but in our culture, most of the students or young people, they take things just for granted. Okay, like this is normal, I have everything, I'm not hungry, I have, I have some place to live, but no, everything is okay, so there is nothing to be worried about. And I think that experiencing and, um, and also expressing uh, gratitude is really powerful. Uh, intervention, so I think that the gratitude really plays an, in, an important role in maintaining high quality social relationships and also it's connected with greater respect and for everything we, we can get in our life. So let me finish with this take home message. What if you woke up today with only the faith that you thank God 
for yesterday. So thank you very much for your attention.